Grace, mercy, and peace to each of you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church on a beautiful December morning. It's great to see everybody today. If you're visiting with us today, we want to extend a special welcome to you. Please let us know if you have any questions, and if you would do us the favor of filling out the little card at the end of the pew rack and letting us know you were here. We appreciate that very much. Several announcements today. The session is reminded of our meeting today following worship. I hope that's not a surprise to you, session members. I want to say a word of thanks to those who attended the memorial service for Frankie yesterday. It was a, it was a wonderful service, especially Presbyterian women for providing the food after. All that was really well received by the family. It was great. I also want to thank Sissy Taylor and all those who helped host our table for the Christmas parade last night. We parked cars and served chili and cookies and showed hospitality of Jesus Christ to our neighbors. And it was a lot of fun, so I appreciate all that work and help with all of that. <clears throat> Anybody interested in Christmas caroling today, meet at 1 here at the church. We will go to, I think, the Reserve and Morning Point, and NHC in Columbia, and maybe a couple other places. Um, the residents there have really gone through a rough couple of years, and so we're hoping to go and bring a little Christmas joy to them today. Uh, I don't think there's a real singing requirement. No, no, we'll, just give, like you, we'll, we'll give you books, even if you don't know the carols. Have the words as well. Next Sunday is our annual Christmas pageant here at the church. Anna Johnson and the children have been working hard in preparation. I hope you'll attend next week. That's a tradition here that we look forward to at the end of this year. Finally, make sure your friends and family know about our Christmas Eve worship, 6.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve, of course. We'll celebrate the sacrament of communion as well as candle lighting service, another tradition here. I think Deborah has... Uh, a minute for mission today, our elder for mission. Uh, if you probably already looked at the bulletin and saying the insert is for the Christmas joy offering, which is the last offering we're going to take up this year. Uh, the offering distributes gifts equally to the assistance program of the Board of Pensions and to Presbyterian related schools and colleges, equipping communities of color. So we're helping our church workers and uh, pastors who have retired and who need assistance, and we're also helping prepare uh, the future, helping to prepare young people to work with the church in the future. I would uh, appreciate it if, if you take a minute to look at that. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Don't forget, next Sunday after worship, we'll have our potluck for the month of December, so plan to participate in that. And then finally, a little bird told me that we have a couple birthdays today. Gail Alley's birthday is today, as well as Ricky Brandt's birthday is today. So I think happy birthday would be in order. <laughs>
appropriate for anyone, whether adult, child, boy, girl. So shampoo, soap, body wash, toothbrushes, combs. <coughs> but anything you can think of now between the 23rd, just leave it back in the fellowship hall and we'll sort through them back in line. Great. Awesome. Um, just to add to what Shelby just mentioned, we will be going on the 23rd. We're going to go at the well, and we're going to take on the well vehicle. So we do need a number, and we do need to know who's going. That's very important to know. We'll let you know. What time on the 24th? The 23rd is We're here. leaving the well at 10. In the morning. In the morning. Leaving the well at 10. You can participate. Let Laura or Shelby know. Appreciate your help. Anybody else? Announcements? Continue keeping your prayers, Dave Hanley, who is continuing his treatments this week. Anybody else we need to be praying for? Yes. Um, all the victims and those impacted by the tornadoes um, yes. that day before yesterday, there are quite a few. In fact, I was lucky to find out that one of my sisters was not affected, but it was right next door in the city next to her in Illinois. Jesus Christ is our hope. <coughs> Jesus Christ is our hope for peace. This candle represents love. We light this candle as a sign of the coming life of Christ. Advent means coming. We are preparing for the days when the Messiah comes, all nature and Humanity is going to respond to Jerusalem. Blind shall 
shall see the light of great light here. The speechless will sing for joy, and the redeemed will inherit the kingdom. Let us pray. Dear God, we look forward to the coming of your Son to the pure and certain promise of his words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We thank you for the love that we know in the presence of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and join together in singing. <laughs> Actually, if you would stand and we will do the call to worship. God, we are thirsty for you. Come on, Holy Spirit, fill us up. God, we long for peace. Come on, Christ, we long for your peace. God, we are ready. Now, hymn number eight. Thank you. like me, and not know a very important thing about this flower. 
point to what you think is the flower. What's the flower on the tree? Good point. What do you flower? Wow. You are 10 times smarter than I was because I always assumed that the flower is the red part. But that's not the bloom. Those are actually the leaves. Well, I did not know that. And I started thinking that this is kind of like the story of Jesus. Because in a couple of weeks, our <laughs> whole platform up here is going to be covered with poinsettias. And in those poinsettias, maybe remember that things aren't always what we expect. These tiny little flowers that I overlooked look very simple. But that's sort of the way Jesus came to earth, right? Jesus came to earth in a very simple way. He was born in a lowly manger inside of a stable with not many people around. <coughs> and may we remember that just because he came in a very simple, unexpected way, we need to keep our eyes peeled for the season of Christmas and how we can be blessed in each other in a very unexpected way. Okay? Hold our hands up. Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer as we enter into this holiday season. May we remember the real reason for the season, for the gift of Jesus Christ born in that simply lowly manger. And when we see the poinsettias spread around the church and community and inside of our homes, may we be reminded, may your spirit fill us, and may we be blessing to others with you. And all God's children say, our hymn of preparation is number four would you stand
Would you stand and respond using the words of Psalm 92? Would you stand? The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they shall not be cut. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. Showing that the Lord is upright, He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in Him. Please be seated. <coughs> Speaking of sap, the strong man at the circus was demonstrating his strength one day by taking a green stick and squeezing all of the sap out of it. When he had squeezed out several drops, he asked if anyone in the audience would like to try. And this frail-looking little lady came forward. She took the stick in both hands, and she began to squeeze. And suddenly, to the amazement of the strong man, a stream of sap began to go down over her knuckles. Wow! Who are you anyway, lady? he asked. Oh, I'm just the treasurer at the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> that one is told in honor of Bill Russell, our <laughs> Presbyterian Church treasurer, who spends hours and hours making sure we have the funds we need. Really, I'm happy to say thank you for all that you do for us. So today, things are a little out of the ordinary. I thought it important to set up our scripture a little bit in order for you to really hear it. Now, some of you that attended Frankie's service yesterday already heard this yesterday. I had forgotten when we originally had planned the service that Frankie had asked for Isaiah 55. So when I saw it yesterday and knew that that's what we were doing today, I thought to myself, somebody really wants us to hear Isaiah 55. So I dare not waste these words. We live in a world that is so abundant with words. They are spoken to us and emailed to us and texted to us. We, we share words through our little screens. They come to us through all the devices we use. Sometimes we put those little earbuds in to hear words, and sometimes we just use the speakerphone in the store so everyone can hear from Aunt Merle. Lots and lots of words all the time. In fact, just like light pollution some of us have never seen really the stars and all of their magnificence. If you've never been to a place with no light pollution, the heavens and the stars look like a carpet of lights. I was once in a tiny boat 60 miles out into the Atlantic. I've told that story here before, and the stars are just breathtaking. But most of us never have a chance to see those heavenly lights because of the amount of light that is around us all the time. So I started using this little phrase, I heard it not long ago, when I begin to feel overwhelmed by all the words and the lights and the noise and the crowds and the traffic, especially at this time of the year, I'll say to my kids, turn down the music so I can see. It sounds ridiculous, but you've likely heard others adopt this phrase. Turn things down a little bit so that we can hear these words that Isaiah wants us to hear today. That's my hope. For a few minutes this morning, I want us just to, to turn things down just a little bit. Most scholars think these words are from what we know as second Isaiah. There are at least three voices that get characterized as the prophet Isaiah. Each were prophets, each messengers with God at a specific time in history for God's people. And chapter 55, our reading today, comes at the end of 2 Isaiah. It's known as the Comfort Book. It encompasses chapters 40 through 55. Chapters 40 through 48 were addressed to the exiles while they were still in Babylon. You remember that the ancient prophets predicted that if the people of God were not faithful to God as a nation, then they would be vulnerable to attack by another nation, and of course, their worst fears came true. They were conquered by the Babylonians and the Persians. The nation of Israel was carried off to foreign lands in service and slavery. They had suffered. Everything they owned was taken from them. Families were separated one from another. 
It's kind of a miracle that our faith survived, actually, that period of exile. But it did, thanks be to God. Some scholars believe that the rest of 2nd Isaiah, the chapters 49 to 55, our reading today, were preached to those that had returned to Jerusalem after the exile. Under Cyrus, the Persian Empire, they were allowed to return to Judah, to their homeland, and many returned. But in no way was this either a time of abundance for God's people. The city of Jerusalem still was not rebuilt from 50 years earlier. It still remained in ruins from the Babylonian army. Picture some of those old photos and movies that you've seen about Europe after the Second World War. Buildings are destroyed, still charred and black from being set afire. Every bit of beauty stripped away, destroyed. And there was no economic system. Structures were weak and ineffective. Many people were poor and hungry. Nehemiah would report later that families were even selling their children into slavery just to pay off the debts in order to survive. When I read in a few minutes the call to come and buy wine and milk without money and without price, you now know how this was heard by those that Isaiah was speaking to. Isaiah called them to comfort and even an invitation to abundance. Feast at the Lord's table, he said. This invitation comes from Almighty God. Even in the midst of unfaithfulness and defeat, the covenant, the eternal covenant, remains steadfast. Remember your ancestor David, says Isaiah, in the times when God's people were united and strong in history. David was a witness to how God intends for the nation of Israel to dwell. When abundance and peace were the rule, when other nations came to David and the nation of Israel to seek his blessing. The Lord God was glorified because of God's love for David. And David was king because God was Lord and king. Friends, quiet your heart and your soul for a few minutes here with me. Turn down the music so you can see. Imagine yourself as one of those exiles who returned from Babylon, broken, conquered, wondering if God even still cares for you. You are the lost nation of Israel. It's a miracle that you're still alive, an even greater miracle that you have found your way home again to the ancient lands of your forefathers and mothers. And you're here in this great and grand banquet hall of our God. A feast is laid out before you. The table is full and abundant. A chair has been reserved just for you. In the midst of the, of the ruins the brokenness, hear the words of the prophet Isaiah, who speaks for Almighty God himself, inviting you to come into this banquet hall. You are to be a guest of the King, the Almighty Creator King. It's an invitation to celebrate, listen to the herald of God himself, like Geoffrey Chaucer in service to King Edward. The prophet Isaiah rises from his seat in the grand banquet hall, he takes a cup, and holds it up and motions towards you, and he begins with a shout, Hear ye, hear ye, gather around and hear ye. If you are hungry, hear ye. If you are thirsty, hear ye. If you are poor and defeated and broken, hear ye. In fact, I think I'll, I'll come down into the midst of the hall to read these words from Isaiah. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good. Delight yourselves in rich food. Delight Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. You see, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. 
He is glorified. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteousness their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth and shall not return to me empty. But it shall accomplish that which I purpose. And succeed in the thing for which I sent. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. And the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the cypress. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial. For an everlasting sign. That shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, these words are not just ancient words. They are not just meant for an ancient people. This is not an ancient story with no future. These these words were meant to be heard by, by you and by me. This is our invitation to celebrate, too, in the midst of our brokenness and our losses. We are still a people that struggle. The world is not yet what it was meant to be. There is still pain and loss and suffering. And yet, Jesus Christ has been faithful. The word that was sent has fulfilled the purpose foretold. And because Jesus lives, we do. Because he feasts at the banquet table, we too have a seat. We enjoy the same love as one in David's line. What a blessed people we are. We will go out in joy and be led forth in peace, and even the mountains and the hills will burst into song before us, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Hear ye, Hear ye. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray together. <laughs> God, you have made us and all things to serve you. You have prepared the world for your rule. So we pray, come quickly to save us, Lord, so that wars and violence shall end, poverty and injustice, all the ways that we find ourselves lost and broken. Save us so that your children may live in peace, honoring one another with your love and even grace. We pray for the needs that we are aware of this day, those that are sick, those that grieve the loss of family and friends. God, we pray for our neighbors, those that are lonely, fighting depression and addiction. Deliver us, Lord, into the mercy of your heart through the power of Jesus Christ. God, in all we say and in all we do, grant us the wisdom to see your purpose and the openness to hear your will so that we too may prepare the way for Christ, who is coming in power and glory to establish his kingdom of peace and justice. Through Jesus Christ, who is our judge, our king, our redeemer, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, who taught us to pray together the prayer of saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and our glory be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship God now with the bringing forth of our tithes and our offerings.
bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord always look upon you with favor.